Bengals 27, Chiefs 24 in the AFC Championship game. And Arrowhead proved no match for the swag that was Joey Burrow. And good gracious with the Bengals. I mean, you want to talk about the way that they have gotten through these NFL playoffs. The last two ball games, they have intercepted four passes off of deflect, like off deflections. The amount of luck that it takes to get those to go in your favor is one thing, but that defense has played lights out, man. And it it's not just Joe Burrow; it's the whole team has seemingly taken on his persona. What they did in the second half to that Chiefs offense is absurd. They gave up three points after halftime and made a stop. And, needed, and, yeah. and listen, the Chiefs needed those three points to tie the game to take it to overtime. Oh, yeah. I mean, they did not score for the the whole 30 minutes. I mean, they the <laughs> kicked half. a field goal on the last play Weren't of the second half. Weren't even in field goal range. They have one of the best field goal kickers in the game and never even got in field goal range. Not just didn't score. Oh, it was just unbelievable. And, and of course, for the Bengals to get to where they needed to be, they needed a goal line stop at the end of the first half which I understand going for it and playing aggressive football, et cetera, when you've got one of the best quarterbacks uh, in the league, yeah, you're going to take that opportunity. You think that you're going to be able to make something happen with five seconds left. You should be throwing in the end zone and make it a quick pass so that you've got an opportunity to kick a field goal if you don't get it. But to throw... A, a little out pass like that, uh, yeah, you would hope that Tyreek Hill could make a move on somebody. But well, that's but that's so much of their offense is just get the ball to Tyreek and let him do something. Yeah, and no, don't that, get me wrong. Like, I mean, he like was awesome in the first. I, I will tell you this: I, I sent the message to our group before the game. I really thought these two teams were pretty even across the board, player for player wise. I yeah. honestly believe that. And and the argument was is is where the separation is. The only place that I thought the Chiefs had a significant advantage was at coaching. And and I actually think Andy Reid outcoached himself. I oh, think yeah. Andy Reid Andy Reid got me. I think coaching is the reason they lost because I think player for player on the field, guys made good plays, guys made bad plays. We got to remember this defense for the uh, for the, for Cincinnati. They did something pretty special. I don't think these things are luck things. Um, they made Patrick Mahomes look really bad. Patrick Mahomes threw one interception this year. He threw two in this game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is it is remarkable what they were able to do to him in the second half because he they could not get anything going. No. I mean, it was just when you look they at the play-by-play. They scored three play, touchdowns unanswered, and then they just stopped. I mean, they. I believe uh, Parker... Uh, yeah, at Stats of War on Twitter, uh, I think he tweeted out that the Chiefs got like 99.96% of the available yards in the first half. The only yard that they did not get that was available to them was that last play of the first half. Yeah. That was it. Like, it's unbelievable. And you look at what they did coming out in the second half, the Bengals defense, uh, Kansas City, five plays, 16 yards, punt. Five plays, 17 yards, punt. Two plays, seven yards, interception. Three plays, punt. Uh, Three plays, punt. And then they had a 14-play, 49-yard drive that they had to kick a field goal on that they were lucky to even get to attempt the field goal because Patrick Mahomes dropped the football. That's right. Oh, no. And not only he drops the football there, but he drops the football in a place where only one offensive lineman was back there with him. And if that offensive lineman, if the ball doesn't fall right in front of that guy and he falls on it, that's ball game they lose in regulation. Yeah. Uh, the defensive coordinator for the Bengals is Lou Anarumo. And I hope I say that right uh, because I don't know that we've ever actually talked about him. No, uh, well, no, well, no we haven't. <laughs> the coaching job. So this is, this is a little bit of an argument for patience, okay? Because I, along with, I think 90% of the people that cover and talk and, and have thoughts about the NFL all thought Zach Taylor is the weak link here. And maybe it's a thing where, you know, at some point in time, you've got to develop talent. At some point in time, these guys got to learn your system. At some point in time, patience just has to play out. I don't know that I would have been that patient. I think I think going into this season, that team was really good. 
they addressed a couple of their weak spots the best they could with the assets that they had. And the weakest link I thought they had was that head coach. Yeah. And, and, and I obviously win or lose in the Super Bowl, you can't say that anymore. You, oh, you just can't. Absolutely. I mean, we talked about him being uh, possibly one of the first to get fired this year. Yeah. Nope. At I, the beginning I, of the season. It, I, I, all, my argument was I think Joe and the surrounding cast there are too good. He's going to win just enough games to never get fired in Cincinnati, but I thought that was going to keep them from ever doing anything special. Oh yeah, because we and know I that wrong. I was just wrong. About yeah, that ownership group does not like to fire coaches. They no, they don't make rash hire, decisions. If, if you yeah, if you can win seven eight games a year, and then every three or four years make a run and make the playoffs or something like that, and you don't even have to win in the playoffs. No, no, you don't have to win. You just have to make it every you know, like I said, four or five years, um, make a make a playoff berth, and you can keep a job there for fifteen years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was just in, insane. Uh, Lou Anarumo had not been a defensive coordinator until Zach Taylor brought him into the Bengals. Uh, he was a defensive backs coach at Marshall. He was a defensive backs coach at Purdue when Joe Tiller was there. Uh, he was a defensive backs coach for the Dolphins up until 2017. He was a DB's coach for the Giants in 2018. And then Zach Taylor called him and asked if he wanted to be my my defensive coordinator, and he's been that for the Bengals for the last three seasons. And the defense has really, really played well this season and continued to do so. And, I mean, they got a rookie kicker that is lights out. Evan McPherson is awesome uh, because he he effectively won them the game again. And all of them seem to take on the confidence of their quarterback. Like, this is, this is a Joe Burrow-led team, and they are awesome. So I I didn't think it would happen, but here we are. Uh, they, they are on their way to the Super Bowl. Uh, were there any plays that stood out for you or anything that uh, that we haven't brought up about this one? No, I mean, there's a whole lot that, that happened in this game. You know, I, I would like to address the fact that, once again, I told you the reason I thought the Bengals could win this game and, and probably would win this game is at some point in time, it's a numbers thing. Teams don't just go to the Super Bowl over and over and over again. We have to stop looking at this league, this sport, through the eyes of what Tom and Bill did. But they didn't even go every year. I mean, really. Well, but they, I mean, well, Tom played 22 years and he went to 10. Yeah. So, I mean, the best team ever. At some point in time, at some point in time, yeah, they kind of did go every other year. Yes, yes. But what I'm saying is they didn't go every year. Which is what well, no. we were looking at with Mahomes. I mean, it was it had been two straight. Uh, they had been to That's the right. AFC. They've now been to the AFC title game four straight times. Well, I mean, the Patriots went to AFC title games all the time. And oh, That's yeah. fine. They didn't win them all, and that's okay. My my thought is is at some point in time you've got to realize this is a team. Mike Wilbon. I've heard him say it years ago, or not years ago, but maybe last year. He was just done with just anointing the Chiefs as just you know, the next Patriot. And that's the problem. They're a dynasty of one. Okay. Yes. Aaron Rodgers, everyone thought his whole career would just be, you know, the next Peyton, the next Tom. There aren't another, there's not going to be another Tom ever. Well, and you, that we need to yeah. stop that as the, as the, uh, as the standard. Okay. But look at what it the, just, uh, look at what the Patriots did and how they built that dynasty. And it was not built on Tom Brady. Like he was a key piece of it, but that dynasty was built with defense. That's how they won a ton the of their fir- games. The, like the first three were the first three. Yeah. But remember they won the first three. They went to seven other Super Bowls after that. Agreed. Okay? You can't tell and me. Not a, that, and not a single one of those other Super Bowls were won or lost because of defense. Oh, I beg to differ. The one that, that where they beat the Rams in 2017. Uh, maybe was the Rams. 100%. Just because it was a low scoring game doesn't mean the defense won that thing. Oh, that like, was that was pure. Like that was a defensive team. That was a great well, yeah, but both team. teams shut everybody down. So oh, if the yeah. game is played to a stalemate and somebody wins at the end but then, because yeah, that's, the that's other great. team goes for the drive, then they win the game. Agreed. Agreed. But either way, what I'm saying is the way that the, the Patriots were able to do it over and over again, like this Chiefs defense has been eh, mediocre at best. Well, I don't know. I thought the Chiefs oh, no, no, no. I thought the Chiefs defense played great Sunday. Oh, they did on Sunday, but for the for the duration of the season. 
They have been well, they were up and a down. mediocre They defense. were up and down. They were they were the worst defense in the league for like seven weeks. And then they put together like four or five weeks stretch of being one of the top five defenses in the league. It, but if you go back and you look, I pointed this out. All those teams that they looked really good against defensively were all garbage football teams. Yes, that's what I'm saying. They, they are and a then, mediocre defense. And, but, they, but, but they looked good on Sunday. Well, yeah, they looked really good against a good offense, against yes. a real good offense. Yes, they did. Uh, but Patrick Mahomes is the reason they lost this game. Patrick Mahomes was bad, okay? Yeah. Flat out bad. Well, that's, that's the problem, bad. right? When you rely on a guy to play hero ball all the time, uh, the plays that he's trying to make, you can't duplicate that week in and week out. It's, no. it's almost impossible. So it, you have to have something more, which is what I was saying about the Patriots. You got to have more than just that guy trying to fling sidearm passes all yeah. the time. No, and that's what the, I, I would tell you. That's what I appreciate and like about the Bengals is, is yeah. they they are more. They you know they they really are a team. Yes, Joe. Joe. Everybody has has taken on his persona and and his swagger and in his confidence, and that's all great. But at the end of the day, they really are a, a good team. Yes. Yes, they are. 100%. Uh, defense, by the way, gave up 375 total yards. The Bengals' defense did. And, uh, and the Chiefs only gave up 359. So, you know, that's 66 plays to 67 plays. Uh, the Bengals had one fewer. But, uh, but I mean, it was close. 5.4 yards per play to 5.6. I mean, this was it was a hell of a game. Hell of a game. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.